All right. Good morning, TBC. Welcome to 2021. It's an honor to be here with you. My name is Jordan. I get to bring you announcements as we kind of shuffle in here. So just a few quick things from me. Um, we are starting New Testament kickoff this week. Garen's going to talk much more about it today. But if you wanted to be a part of that New Testament reading and you didn't have a book, you can contact the church office. We got a shipment in. If we can't get you one of those, we will get you on a list to get one eventually. Um, those are going kind of quick. But if you need a book for the New Testament reading, contact the church office. Hey, whoa, boost. Yeah, contact the church office and we'll, we'll take care of you. Students, um, we're going to be doing this New Testament reading in our life groups this semester. But we don't start life groups until the 24th. So if you wanted to start your reading on your own, there's a table at the back with some student editions of this that you're, you're welcome to take. Just write your name down and how many you take. Um, so if you want to start reading on your own and be ready for, for your group on the 24th, that's great. If you just want to jump right in on the 24th and jump in like halfway through Matthew or wherever we are, um, that's fine too. Whatever you want to do, just wanted to, <clears throat> just wanted to give you the option to start from the very beginning if you wanted to. Um, what else? No children's Sunday school today, which you found out if you... Actually, it's second service, so don't take your kids there. There'll be no one. Um, but that is for kindergarten through high school. We're not going to do Sunday school today, and that comes back next week. And there's actually a lot of things coming back soon. So that comes back next week. And then the 24th, we have Delta and Scooters returning, and then, like we already said, adult and student life groups. So a lot of stuff kind of starting back up here in January. Let's see. Last thing. If you would like a giving statement for the year 2020, you can contact the office for that. I think you can also just log in on our little CCB thing. If, if you have a login through our church, you can, you can look at your giving statements there. But if you don't know what I mean when I say that, then you just contact the church and we'll get you your giving statement. So either way, we'll get it to you. Okay. I think that is all I've got. So will you guys stand with me? We're going to pray and then we'll get to worship here. All right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for a new day. We thank you for new mercies that are here to meet us, God. Um, we thank you for a new year. We thank you for a new opportunity to follow you and serve you well and get closer with you. And so just pray that's what we see this morning as, God. It's a fresh start with you. It's, a, it's an ability to build on something with you. It's an ability to meet you for the first time. It's, it's an ability to, uh, to just take advantage of of your newness every day. And so we love you, Lord. We give you this time. We ask you to meet us right here. Um, we just ask you to bless everything that happens this morning, not for our good, not for our plan, but totally for yours, Lord. And so uh, just remove any human element that you can from today and replace it with your spirit because we just want it to be so focused on you. So in a new year, we're just grateful to serve a good God. And so we just pray that's what this worship is. It's a response to you and your goodness. And so bless Rob, bless Garen. Bless everyone up here today. And uh, yeah, we're just excited to meet with you here, Lord. So come and meet with us. Thank you for your son. His sacrifice is the reason that we can even be here and, and be with you today. So it's in his name that we pray all these things. Amen. Uh, good morning, everyone. So this morning, I've been thinking for a, a while about the first song that I wanted us to sing together in uh, 2021. And I came up with the one that we're about to sing, and I was stoked because, like, guys, it's a great song, okay? Um, and I got to rehearsal, and everyone's like, hey, we haven't done that here before. And I, I could have promised we had. So let's learn a song together for the first song of 2021. I promise it'll be worthwhile. Um, but if you, if you don't know it, don't feel left out because uh, none of them knew it before this week. Okay, let's, uh, let's get to it. Sing, let our praise. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign that we are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath, let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. We are here for you. Sing to you, our hearts are open. To you, our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You Let our 
Thank you for uh, learning. Well, it's not really a new one, but it's probably a new one to us. So thank you for, uh, for joining us in that. Welcome to 12th Avenue. If it's your first time here, we are very excited to join you. Um, and if you're joining with us online, we're excited for you to be with us as well. Um, if you haven't done so already, we have information cards there at the back table. If, uh, if you are starting something new in the new year, like, you know, I don't know, for example, reading the Bible in the year. R random poll. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe not. Um, but you want uh, a partner for that, or you want prayers for something totally different, um, we'd love for you to fill out one of those cards so that we can join you wherever you are on your journey. Same for you guys online. If you'll put that down in the comments, we'd love to pray for you in that way. Um, 2020 was weird. Yeah? Strange. Um, and, and I know that it's strange because we, uh, we see it every day all around, but even even in worship, we you know we we have masks on, and um, there was a lot of fear in 2020, and honestly, there's still some fear now. But um, for 2021, at least for me, one of the things that I've been focusing on and thinking on when preparing for this week is just the lordship of Jesus, that God is in control, that He knew 2020 was going to be what it was. It's not fun, but but He knew it. Um, and we're in a new year, and, you know, for us, that signals a new start. But for God, uh, he's known about it for eternity. And so I, I just feel like, at least for me, it gives me confidence that, that we can rest in that. Gosh, that, that we, can, we can be excited to know that, that God has this. And so we, I just want us to celebrate that with, uh, with the songs that we sing this morning. So let's, let's continue to worship today. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare your living home. You 
tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free how my shame is what our hearts 
come before you today. Thankful that we get to be in your presence. Thankful that we know that you're in control, God. That we've we've spent time in fear. But God, that we don't have to, that you you've taken fear from us, you've taken uncertainty from us. And the only thing that we need is just to rest in your presence. God, we welcome you to this place. We praise you for being who you are. God, we love you. We thank you for Jesus. It's through him we pray. Amen.
change to come, knowing the battles won, for you have never failed me yet. Sing, your promise still stands. Your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You never fail me yet. I know the night won't last. Your word will come to. sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing this morning. Sing, I've seen you move. See you. 
promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. God, we praise you for that this morning that you have moved mountains. God, and then in the, in the grand scheme of things and in the whole life cycle of the world that 2020 is a molehill. God, we pray that this year we would put our trust in you. But as we spend time in your word that we would find, God, that you are good, that you are righteous, that you are holy, and that you have us in your hands. God, we praise you for that. Thank you for taking care of us, God, even though we don't deserve it. Thank you for your son. It's through him we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, Aaron Blocker, where is Aaron? There she is. Come on up, Aaron. If you don't know, this is Aaron Blocker. Aaron, tell everybody what you do. Um, I am an instructor at ESU in the Health and Human Performance Department, and I coach track and field alongside my husband Steve. Yeah, and he's the head track and field coach, right? And what's what's your discipline? Your primary discipline in track and field? In track, pole yeah, vault. Pole vault. Did you do pole vault in college? Yeah. Yeah. So here's the reason I have Aaron up here. We're going to do something, start something new this year. We, we've been doing the generosity moment since we've come back from, from COVID, since we don't pass the offering plates, but it's given us a chance to focus more on our missionaries and some of the local ministries that we've been doing. We're really trying to have this focus on God's mission, not just to the nations, but we have been including more stuff related to what's going on locally. And this year, we're even going to add a new thing to that. There are um, 12, 12 spheres of life, 12 vocational areas, education, business, agriculture, um, medicine, law, I could go through all 12. And what we're going to do is once a month, we're going to have somebody from one of those fields so that each year we go through all 12. And we're going to ask them really similar, the same questions. And Aaron was willing to be my first, my guinea pig. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, because the reality is, you know, at the end of every service, we always say, you are sent, because we are all missionaries. We are all people who are sent by God and placed in the places where we are to make a difference for his kingdom. And so we want to really start even more emphasizing that. So four simple questions for you. You've introduced yourself. Uh, see if I can remember these from when we talked on the phone. I better get used to it because I got to ask these once a month. Uh, the first question is, Okay, I know because of COVID, school's not back in yet, but normally, what would you be doing at 10 o'clock on Monday morning? Um, it kind of depends on the semester because our teaching schedules change, but typically, um, I would be getting done teaching a class and then go back to my office and have office hours in which students are supposed to come hang out and get to know you, but that never happens. Never happens. So, grading papers, planning the lecture for the next day, something like that. Occasionally a student drop in, not much. Like maybe once in every thousand days. <laughs> it's not real often. Once every three years. Unless okay. they desperately need something or they got a bad grade or every once in a while. Yeah. I think my athletes actually stop by my office probably more than the students do because they, they have other classes. So. Yeah. So tell me, how are you trying to be <clears throat> salt and light at Emporia State University? Um, I think... The biggest thing that I have tried to do, especially like this last semester, because it's just such a, it's such a bizarre teaching situation, and anybody who's in education, like, we feel that. Um, you can't see people's faces when you're teaching to them, and so you miss the smiles and, and all that kind of stuff. So just really trying to, like, show love to the students, um, whether that's having conversations with them before class or after class or sending an email to say, hey... Um, you know, noticed you were really quiet today. Is everything okay? Just, just kind of checking in um, 
trying to get to know them on a more personal level because we are missing a lot of that personal, um, I don't know, facial, nonverbal communication. Um, but yeah, just trying, trying to be love. Um, that's something that I've really grown in as an educator over the years. Um, when I first started, I was the stickler, and it was like, it's either right or it's wrong, and it's not on time, and, and I've learned to like choose my battles, and in and, and that way, I'm being more loving to the students. Um, but yeah, just trying to give them love and show them love and, and show them peace and, and trying to, I don't know, battle against that fear mm -hmm. that is um, instilled on a daily basis. And how about on the athletic, with the athletics? <clears throat> how are you trying to be, how are you guys trying to be salt and light there? It's a lot easier in athletics, honestly. There's a lot, um, there's not as many barriers that are imposed from other, you know, outside forces. And so I can very openly talk about Jesus with my athletes and they know that I'm a Christian and they know that I'll pray for them and um, stuff like that. So Steve and I are pretty open about that. And, you know, Steve leads FCA. So that's been a really good opportunity for us to be the salt and the light to them. And, um, but again, just, just being there for them, texting them when they have a great day or a bad day and um, just letting them know, like, you as a person is more important to me than you as an athlete. Yeah, good job. So what are, <laughs> what are some of the difficulties of being salt and light where you're at right now? <laughs> um, like I said, athletics, not super difficult. Um, I feel like we actually have a lot of support um, to share our faith or just, you know, to be open about that type of stuff. Um, and it's just a different environment. You know, you're, you're working a lot more one-on-one -on -one with, with the athletes than in the large groups of the, with the students. Um, I don't know if this is higher ed in general, just maybe education in general, but there's definitely, um, we're told, you know, this is not your platform. So when you're in the classroom setting, like, this is not your platform to share your faith, to um, share your belief systems kind of thing. So that is something that we have to be aware of. Um, but I remember one of my colleagues and I, she probably, I don't know if she's here or not. I think she comes to second service. Um, but we even thought about putting like, you know, how there's like safe space stickers on people's offices, put like a heart with a cross. And we're like, safe space, you can come. <laughs> if you're a Christian, you can come hang out here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's definitely um, some, some unique barriers, kind of, kind of sometimes unspoken barriers, just yeah. saying, hey, you know, that's nice. Maybe keep it to yourself. <laughs> but you feel it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's, it's felt. Okay. How can we pray for you? <clears throat> um, I would say just providing opportunities. Um, I actually had, I have had opportunities to pray with students in my office. And so just like continuing to bring um, those opportunities to help students see God's light and, and wonder and be like, hmm, maybe I could talk with her about that or my other colleagues who are Christians um, just to provide those opportunities for us to, um, to witness to our students. Um, and then just to give the students a sense of, um, like, peace in this craziness um, because there is, there is a lot of um, fear that's been instilled probably somewhat unwarranted on that particular population. Um, so just to give them a little bit of ease. Yeah. And you're, I'm just curious before we pray for you, what, just in praying for students, I mean, if any student comes in with a problem, you're willing to pray for them whether they're a believer or not? Is that oh, right? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's a pray definite. Pray that they find Jesus and then solve their problem. <laughs> yeah. So that's a way you can be salt and light. That's great. Yeah. Um, here's what I'd like to do. This is going to be part of when we do this once a month. I'd like anybody here who is an educator to stand. I'd also like anybody here who is in athletics in any form to stand. So if you're an educator or if you're in athletics, would you please stand? Because we want to pray for all of you. Yep, we want to pray for all of you. Okay. Father, pray for, for Aaron and Steve, for... Thank you for their life, for the way they are salt and light at Emporia State University, not just as educators, but as in working with athletics and the track and field program up there. Um, pray for, I pray for Aaron, and I pray for all the educators that are here and all the athletes that are here, Lord, that you would 
give them the strength to represent you well in that, uh, that field, that they would demonstrate your love through their care for the individual students, that you would help them to navigate some of the difficulties of their sharing their faith and the educational system in the U.S. right now. Even for the athletes, I pray, Lord, that's not always the easiest place to be. Sometimes we have stereotypes that athletes are all about partying or having fun, um, and it can be a little bit fearful to want to share your faith, but Lord, we know there are people in all areas who are seeking you, and I pray that you would help those who are involved in athletics to, to be open to that, to see that, to be willing to share their faith. So thank you for these people who are missionaries on this field of education, who are missionaries on our athletic fields, on the courts, and, and all those places, and we pray that you would strengthen them and help them in their mission. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yep, you may be seated. Stay here, Aaron, because we're going we're gonna to have you do one more thing. Okay. So, um, all right. Am I going to give you a pole vault lesson? Do what? Oh, pole yeah, vault pole vault lesson. lesson. Yes. Yeah, it's yes. the one event I've always We could get Hattie to up learn here, too. pole vault. Being 90 feet, 20, 90, 19 feet in the air on a pole um, that's bending, like, while you're going up. So... Normally, when we're doing the, the, the generosity moment, like I'm standing, it's kind of weird to do this sitting down for those online, everybody here. But remember, giving is part of our worship. God is generous to us. He has given us new life, and He wants us to be generous with our lives and all things, financially and in serving and in sharing Him. And so we're going to take this minute to, to give people online the chance to, to give. And during this minute, as always, we ask you to pray. You can pray again for our educators, for those that are in athletics. Pray for anything that God lays on your heart. Um, perhaps you can even pray in holiday season. It's tough on families that have lost loved ones. Um, so we could take that moment to pray for them. So we are going to take a minute and give people online a chance to give and give us all a chance to to pray. So let's silently pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this new year. As we um, take this year, I, I loved Robert's challenge even to, to, to focus our worship on you, to make you the one thing. And as we look forward to starting tomorrow to read through your word, the New Testament, that this would be a year of, of growth for us, of drawing closer to you. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, Erin, good job. Didn't she do a good job? Um, and by the way, part of the intent of this, come on up, Jordan, is really be listening because um, the field doesn't matter, but there's things that over the year, as people share that stuff, there's going to be things that apply to everybody. I mean, for me, the one that I take from you that I have found is, I think I've read 95% of the people in the world, in the U.S. at least, not in the world, but if you... If they're sharing a concern and you say, can I pray for you, that I think 95% of the people will say yes, that they actually, that they want that. So that is a, that's a good reminder of, of that. So, all right, we're going to, we're going to jump Garen, in. Garen, bef before you get started, you know, there was, there was a GoFundMe floated a few weeks ago that I would, I would cut my hair if we raised enough money, but I think an equally great GoFundMe would be to see... Aaron give you pole vault lessons. I feel like that just would draw in Done. even more. <laughs> even more than. Just go live with it on YouTube and. There you go. And hit a million views. I'm, I'm all that would be a great track and field fundraiser. Yeah. <laughs> People all over the world. Okay, and I'm not getting the PowerPoint or anything, so I'm going to need you guys to run that from back there if you would. So, all right, tomorrow we start reading through the New Testament. 
We've, we ended up getting extra of these, and last week gave out more. We've given, I mean, sold already over 300 of these, which is really amazing. Really want to challenge you. Tomorrow is the first day of reading, Matthew chapter 1. Want to challenge you to, to join us. If you're, if you're here, I already had a couple like, hey, we need to get those. I've got a few with me this morning. You can come up and talk to me. If not, if I run out, I've got more coming in the next few days. Um, so we want to do that. And as Jordan said, if you're here and you're a student, we've got the student version of them on the back that you can pick up if you want to start reading tomorrow with the whole church. Um, interestingly, just as we think about that, we got, as I was getting these in this week, these New Testaments, and we were un, unwrapping them and putting them with names of people who had emailed and said, I want to be in on it, and as we were emailing people and telling them to come in, there were, most of them I got were just in excellent condition, but I got, a t- I got two that were really interesting. One we got had not been read, but it was, it was full of leaves. I think that's the first picture. It had a bunch of leaves in it. So they never read their Bible, but they sure used it to, to, uh, to flatten leaves. Is that what you do? Flatten leaves? I don't know. So hopefully you'll do more than just put leaves in your New Testament. And then I think Wednesday got this one, and I always go through them to make sure they're clean. And as I was going through it, I noticed that it, even though it was promised when I bought it that there was no highlighting in it, you can see that it had been marked up. And I'm like, I wonder how far they got in. And that's Monday, which would be tomorrow. And then the next day is totally clean. So they got one day in (laughs) and gave up. So we're going to talk about that in a minute, how that kind of thing happens. So really want to challenge you to to do this, to get in a group with some people um, to do that. So, all right, Jordan, I know last week, I loved your sermon, by the way. You did a really great job. I I left more challenged than ever to do it. You mentioned last week, um, we did that video like a month ago, that if you read the Word one time a week or two times or three times, it doesn't make much difference in your life, but when you hit four, it jumps up. And you and I remember in the office, you're like, why is it, why is four days different than three? And you mentioned it last week. I just want you to say a little bit more about that. I thought that was so profound. So what, tell us, especially for people that weren't here last week, why is getting in the Word of God four times a week so much more significant than three. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've talked about it a few times. When you're in the Word four times, <clears throat> at least four times a week, you see this huge jump. Is that, we have that slide, is that a part of this or no? Uh, no. Maybe not. It's, it's okay. Yeah. Forget that slide. You can but back up. Basically, it's very life-changing when you're in the Word at least four times. And it's not like one good, two good, three good, four great. It's like nothing, 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 four. Oh, awesome. And so we were talking about why that is. And um, I think what I came up with was, it, was that it just starts with what's in here is no good, right? It just starts with the fact that what is within us is no good. And in, in, uh, in Jeremiah 17, it even says the human heart is the most deceitful and the most wicked thing above all else. It's the most wicked thing in existence, right? And just how heavy that thought is. And then also in Jeremiah 17, it contrasts it with, you know, God says, if you'll follow what I say, if you listen to my words, you'll be like that tree that's firmly rooted, right? Like we said in Psalm 1 last week too. And so it's just like, what side do you want to choose? Which, which one do you want to feed? Because if you're someone who listens to your own way and, and constantly draws on your own thoughts and what do I think is right, well, you're following a counselor that is wicked and deceptive. And so it's not going to lead you to a good place. And so when you, um, when you choose to listen to God's word, it takes you to a place of truth, right? And so that four number is just more then half of seven is basically what it comes down to. Like when you hit that four mark, then more times than not during the week, you're listening to God's voice and not your own. And it's just that idea that, you know, whatever you feed, you're going to become. And so mathematically, four is more than half than seven. So by engaging God's word more than half the time, you're, you're doing yourself a favor and you're setting yourself up for, for life change. Yep. So one day a week, just coming on a Sunday, hearing the word of God or one Sunday and then you open the Bible once a week, that's not going to make much impact because the, the majority of your week, it's still you that's predominating, right? Right, yeah. In fact, just this week in, in our triad group in the Insight, it, he says the same thing. He says, through our union with Christ and his death, we are delivered from the dominion of sin. But we still find sin struggling to gain mastery over us. We may not like the fact that we have this lifelong struggle with sin, but the more we realize and accept it, the better equipped we will be to deal with it. The Bible tells us that the heart is deceptive and unsearchable to 
to any but God alone in Jeremiah 17. Even as believers, we do not know our own hearts, 1 Corinthians 4, 3. Knowing that indwelling sin occupies a heart that is deceitful and unsearchable should make us extremely wary. And so I just love that because it fit that idea that I should be afraid right. of living my life where the main thinking going on is my own thinking because I'll be deceived continually. So, Yeah, can it, you imagine if you were... I mean, if you were following this person and, it, and it, you know they're a deceptive person. Like, if we knew you were wicked and deceptive, we would not listen to what you say every single week, right? That'd be stupid. And yet we know that's how we are. And, and yet we, you do it We still do it. Yeah, we do. <laughs> All the time. So, yeah. Wait, and you're, the, not, you're not wicked and deceptive, are you, Gary? You would tell us, right? Uh, if you only knew my heart. The, so, and that's, a, that's actually a great... The, the other thing that came up is, this actually came up in, in, my, in our group a few weeks back, about a month ago, I think. The idea that, um, that if I'm not daily in the Word, that the flesh begins to predominate in my life. And Aaron, that's kind of why I had you come up here, because the, just, I won't give all the context, but um, if he and I shared how much the flesh dominated in our lives, we'd be here the whole service. We don't have enough time for that. We wanted somebody a little more holy. So <laughs> just briefly, could you just share like that concept that you've talked about, that when you're not in the Word, what do you find? Yeah, I mean, Steve and I have talked about this a lot, um, and it's something that I've noticed within this past year, um, just lots of change going on, and then all the, the weirdness of 2020, um, there are times when I'm just like, I don't feel like reading, I don't have time for this, I've got to get to my class on time, i got to get Matthew to daycare, whatever, um, and you skip it, and then, yeah, the my own evilness, <laughs> that sounds so terrible, but like, you know, my my own selfishness, my own desires, whatever, take over, and then whatever's in my heart, whatever's in, you know, if I'm stressed out or I'm hurried or whatever, that's the stuff that comes out of my mouth. And that's when I find myself, you know, snapping at Steve or losing my patience with Matthew or, or not being the salt and the light to my students, not saying, hey, welcome to class, it's so great to see you, you know, and, um, and that's a horrible feeling, you know, and as, as soon as you snap, you know, like at your husband, your wife, whatever. Um, it's like instantly you're like, oh, why did I say that? That sounds so awful. That's, ugh, you just feel icky on the inside. Um, but gosh, the times when, and, and I think it flows to everything too. Like um, it makes me not want to, you know, exercise as much or like any of these things that I know are healthy for me. Um, but when I'm, I take that time, I'm in the word, number one, everything falls into place. The time that I think I don't have, is there. <laughs> um, you know, five minutes, ten minutes with God, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I have an extra hour in my day to do all these things that I wasn't, you know, going to get accomplished because I'm so busy. Um, and I will never, ever, ever forget um, the sermon that Garen gave probably like two or three years ago. Um, and you had mentioned that um, in one of the Asian languages, there is no word, there is no symbol for busyness. Um, but it, you have to put two symbols together, and it's soul and death. And that was like, oh my gosh, that's just how I feel when I get like that, when I'm like, I'm too busy for God. Um, that's exactly what I feel like. I feel like dry, dead. Mm. Um, but when I spend that time, it's like everything is just alive and happy and vibrant, and, and the whole day is just beautiful because of it. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's, can you imagine how much of guts it took for her to come up here and, and share that about herself? Erin, thank you so no much. Problem. I promise everybody who does this once a month, we're not going to ask that question. So, but thank you for doing that. Can, can we tell, give her our thanks again for... But doesn't that ring true with you? Haven't you found that in your own experience? Um, I know that I have. And so, all right. I think we want to, so if, by the way, if this, if you're new here, this week is a little bit different before we launch into this. We aren't normally sitting in chairs up here and doing all this stuff, but we really felt like we wanted to, to hit some big issues and equip you guys for what we're asking for, for this year. So let's jump to that next thing, Jordan. Yep. So we're, we're jumping into this New Testament time. And so we're thinking about just how to do that, right? Because I think sometimes a we want to do something and we see how to do the big steps, like well, these are the big steps I want to take, but what are the little 10 steps that help me take that one big step? And so 
I think we just wanted to iron out some of those little steps so that we don't jump in tomorrow morning and feel like, ah, what am I doing? I don't even know how to do this. So I guess the first question we want to ask Aaron is, what is your daily time in the Word look like with this study? Because the idea is that you are in the Word by yourself, what is it, six times a week? And then once a week, you come together as your, as your group and talk about it. So me, tomorrow, when I open up you know, my New Testament, what's that process look like yep. for me? So that's why we put this card in every New Testament, and we're going to have it up here. So the first thing that you do in the morning, I mean, when you're... And I really encourage you to have a set time. Um, if you just think, I'm just, at the end of the day, I'll do it when I'm busy, that busyness, that just doesn't work. I really encourage you to to do that first thing in the morning. But I always begin with a prayer, and we've got, um, we've prayed that actually the last month. We were praying some of this every Sunday morning, but just asking God to speak to me because I'm His servant. I'm ready to listen. I want Him to open my eyes so I can discover wonderful things in His law that I want Him to guide me in truth, to teach me. So just begin with that opening prayer. I'm here. I want to meet you. I want to experience you. Would you speak to me? And then just it's, you, read, you read the day's reading. You read the New Testament reading, the Old Testament, and that insight. And what I'm doing when I'm, when I'm doing it is I'm reading. Go to the next one. There's three things that I'm kind of looking for. I'm wanting the Word to speak to me, to my head, to my heart, and to my hand. And so I'm like, Lord, I want to know, show me something new today. Just, I want to learn some new information. Um, it's that, that teaching in 2 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17, if you remember that diagram, it's, it's useful to, for teaching. And as I go through it, what I'm doing is I'm just underlining some stuff. You can tell, I mean, if you look at this, just things are underlined. So as I go through it, I'll underline something. Wow, wow I've never seen that before, or that's interesting. And then um, I'm also, though, not just wanting to learn new things, but I'm really wanting God to speak into my life. And so frequently, almost every morning, I'm like, I so desperately need to hear from you today. That's how I feel so often. Would you speak into my life? And frequently he does. And you can always tell when he's done that because on that page, sometimes it's more than one. I'm just looking for one. But I'll put a star by that one because that to me is the thing that God is really, really speaking to me. I may have learned one or two things in it that I underline, but that star is my indicator of what I've learned. And then that's how God spoke to me. And then the hand is, is okay, whatever God was speaking to me, what can I do to apply that to my life today? The scripture, we'll get to this at the end, but the scripture is of no use if I'm not applying it to my life. So that's how I read it. I pray to the Lord, and that's just kind of the process. I really want to challenge you as you're doing this with a group is to, to, don't be afraid to, to mark in this. Underline the things you're learning, but what I really want to challenge you to do is every day put a star beside the most important thing God speaks to you that day. And because in a minute when we talk about the, the triad, the group, I want to tell you why that's so important. But every day put that star. That was something I was going to ask you, Garen, is you, you know, if you look at anything Garen's read, it's, it's, like, it's like it's a coloring book. Like it is colors, it is lines, it is shapes, like it is, it's wild. So it, would you suggest that we underline and highlight stuff, or is it kind of up to you? Because I'm the kind of person, I'm like, oh, that's good, I'll remember that, and I never, ever do. So yeah. you'd really suggest that we yeah, like Yeah, especially with the triad, because what you're, when you come together, what you're going to share is, so you've maybe starred something each day, and then before you meet, you're looking at that, and you're like, we're, we're asking you to share is, what is the most important thing this week God spoke to you? So you'll look at those stars, and you're like, you know what, it was on Tuesday, that was the thing that most grabbed me, and that, that will help. If you don't do any of that, you'll get together, and it's kind of real random, and it's hard to do. Um, so mark it up. In fact, one of the New Testaments that we got in the mail, look at this thing. Go Show the picture of it. I think I took photos of this thing. Um, look at this. This thing came loaded. Uh, I really encourage you, don't do this method. I, I don't know, if you, unless you want to be really colorful, do the next photo, because the next photo is like what it looks like when it's opened up. Um, but this thing is like so full of these markers. They didn't underline anything, but they put lots of these stuff, this stuff in it. So. And when I put my book on eBay in two years, I want whoever gets it to think that I was really holy too. Yeah, definitely. That's so right. that's the other When you part. sell this in a year, you definitely want the people. I'm going to put my full yeah. name so they're like, wow, he, I know he was holy. You want the next church guy. that's doing this, the pastor, to, to take your New Testament and use it for a story. So. Right. Um, so then let's, um, yeah, so have that set time. One more thing I want to say. Don't expect that you're going to have a wow moment with God every day because if you do that, you'll easily get defeated. Um, I come to it with expectation. I mean, I'm sorry, with expectancy 
that God may very well meet me in a very powerful way today, so I have this sense of expectancy, but you can't have expectation demanding, God, you have to wow me today. Um, like that first reading, it's going to be the genealogy of Matthew 1. Um, probably won't get wowed by that. There's a little bit more, but God doesn't have to wow you every day, so don't, don't have that expectation. Don't get defeated if you're like, well, I bet Garen gets wowed every day because I don't get wowed every day. I'm always learning something. I'm always underlining, but just, just want to tell you that. Can we, can we stop on that point and like just make sure we hit it for sure? Because I don't think we would say that, and maybe I didn't even realize that until you said it, but that is such a huge reason why I fall off my reading plans, and maybe you do too, is like because I start reading it, and I get a few days in, and like nothing huge has happened, and Angel hasn't spoken to me, and I'm like, well, this must not be that good for me. And so, like, that's so huge. Don't expect to be wowed every single day. Really just gut it out and do, do what you're supposed to do and take what you can from it. And God's going to use different times to speak to you. But, man, don't get discouraged if, like, on day three you haven't had an epiphany yet because yeah. I think that's the, what the flesh wants is I want to be wowed every day and it's not going to happen. I feel that one. Um, okay, so we went through that. So we've gone through our, our quiet time by ourselves now we get to our group, Garen. Um, what is that supposed to look like? How long is it supposed to be? What do we talk about? What do we not talk about? How does it go? Who leads it? Like, can you fill that time in for us? Because there's probably people out there in a group who are like, I have zero idea what this is supposed to look like. Yeah, skip. The, go to the next slide if you would. So this is, uh, yeah, by the way, go back to that one. That's really good. Um, or go forward. <laughs> this. No, wait, left. Yeah, no, left, wait. right, turn. Um, that's like when my dad was teaching me driving. <laughs> um, on the front of that card, we really encourage you, there are two people for you to be praying to know Jesus, and if you'll write that on here, and if this is your bookmark, it's just a reminder to regularly pray for those people. So, but on the back of this card should be the next one, which is how the triad thing operates. Um, go one more, if you would. There. So, whenever you meet, and my group's meeting this week on Friday... You know, we're going to be like five days in. We've already decided that this week it's going to be, we're going to share a little bit, but more it's just going to be kind of a get to know each other because my group, I don't know that the other guys know each other very well. But here's all, it's really simple. And I promise you, there's going to, we're going to post a video in the next day or two on the website that'll explain this if you feel like you didn't get it. But it's really asking you to do three things. That when you get together, it could be an hour like for lunch, an hour and a half might be a little more ideal. It tells you how long to spend on each one if you're doing an hour, an hour and a half. But really, you're doing three things. The first one is, is you're, you're just looking back. And it's just, this is where community is formed. It's like, how was your week? What's going on? Um, I know Gary yesterday was the big wedding, right? But we, yeah, and it went well, I assume. But, you know, every week we're like, how, how's things going? And like for the last month and a half, he's had a lot of requests related to the buildup to the wedding. And so it's just, how's life going? So you're sharing life with each other. You're also asking, how did you do last week in the application of the thing that you said God spoke to you and how you wanted to, to obey with your hand? How'd that go? And then it's just praying for each other. So that's the first, if it's like an hour and a half, that's like the first 30 minutes. So it's just sharing, how did you do, praying for each other. And then it's the look up. And the look up is where you go to the Word of God and you just simply, you know, ask the question, what... What's something you learned this week? If you were to say one main thing that you learned, what would it be? But especially the question, what's the main thing God spoke to you, your heart? And that's where you've, if you've starred every day something and you go back and you review that, you're like, again, you know, on Wednesday, this truth really struck me powerfully. Um, I know when we met this last week, the, the truth that struck me the most um, was, let me see, I didn't mark that. Um, where is that one? I should have looked ahead of time better than this. Um, this, this scripture in Revelation where he says, um, he's talking about that they make war with the Lamb of God. This is at the end of, of history before new creation. But the Lamb will defeat them because he is the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. He will defeat them with his, and I, just these words really struck me, with his called, his chosen, his faithful followers. And it just reminded me that in all the difficulties of following Jesus, that at some point his followers will be vindicated. He will be victorious and will be vindicated, and that just, that really struck me. So it's just sharing what is the big thing that God was speaking to you, 
and that's the look up. And then the last one is the look ahead. Okay, so if that is the big thing, then what are you going to do about that? And it's sharing, so my application for this week is going to be this and sharing that. And then when you come back, so it's like, you know, 30, 30, 30 of each of those. I don't remember. It's on the card. But that's what the triad looks like. And again, I'm going to have a video to explain this. So if you need to come back, like, now, what did that look like again? Um, but that's what your meeting time is going to be, um, be looking like. The other thing I want to recommend is, uh, this is why the video will be helpful, is that this is a, the thing about if you do a group of three or four is it really flattens the group. It, there's not necessarily a leader. That's not the point. And so this, you can, what you can do is take turns doing this. So one week it's like you're the one who just says, hey, let's look back. You know, how was your week? How'd you do an application? How can we pray for you? What's, let's look at the word. What was the most important thing you learned? What was God speaking to you? The hand, what are we going to do about it? It's not hard to ask those questions that are on here. So if you just take turns doing that, it's you, you're learning how to walk people through that. So that's part of the intent of it. So that's, that's that. Can we go? Oh, Jordan, I want to jump. So can we look? Can you go to the next slide? Um, Hebrews 4.12 says, The word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. And then the NLT, I think, is the next. It adds... Um, oh, yeah, so Rabbi Hillel, I love this. He says, the more scripture, the more life. Okay, now go to the next one, because with this Hebrews 4.12... The NLT says the Word of God is alive and powerful. And Jordan talked about this last week, and I really wanted to highlight this. I did talk about this. Is this you just did. Jordan's sermon part two? Yeah, like, this is Jordan. This is all. This Jordan is, had some good thoughts. Let me yeah, ride those coattails for a like, few weeks. Is that <laughs> exactly? It's like I don't know what I'm going to say, but you said some really good stuff, so I took a lot of notes. Um, but you talked about like it's the the ring and the Lord of the Rings that he had this one ring that right. he didn't know was the most powerful. He thought it was just a simple magical ring. Um, I, I love this because the Word of God is alive and active. That word active or powerful in Greek is, I know you or he was giving me a hard time about Greek last week. Energes, where we get our word energy. Um, it means to be full of energy, very effectual, powerful. So the Word of God is powerful. It will, it will change your life if you'll give life to it. And I love kind of how you talked about that, that we, we have something in our possession that probably we don't know how important. Yeah. Um, I've got a story, and I want to hear if you have anything else to say about that. Um, I know of a pastor who met with Bill Clinton long ago, and I heard afterwards after he had met, they were in his office, and Bill Clinton reached over and tapped a, a briefcase, and he said, I want you to know the most powerful thing in the world is here in this briefcase. And the pastor asked, what is it? And he said, in here are, is the button and the codes for launching a nuclear. If I'm the, I'm the last one who does it, he said, that's right here, and this... So the most powerful thing in the universe is, in the world is sitting in my briefcase. And the pastor said, frankly, I disagree. I think the most powerful thing in the world is in my briefcase. And Clinton got really curious and said, what is it? And he opened it up and he pulled out a Bible. And he said, the word of God is the most powerful thing. And that's kind of what, what, what the author of Hebrews is saying. Do you have any other, I don't, any other things about that, Jordan? No. That? I mean, we talked about it a lot last week and, and you've kind of hit it already, but just... The fact that this is no, if this was just an ordinary book, it wouldn't be worth being in every day, right? No book is that good. But the fact that this has the ability to change our lives in real ways, I mean, it just, you'd be silly, you'd be silly not to give your life to it. Yeah. So, go to the next slide. Can we start Stay calling to... it the one book to rule them all? Yeah, the is one that, book. <laughs> is that okay? Do you have to pay royalties on that? Or? Yeah, we got applause from a Lord of the Rings fan out there. Go to the next slide, if you would. So, I heard this week, coming back from taking Chris and Pat to the airport, a guy on a podcast who said... Satan does five things to keep to to disrupt our lives or to keep us from good things. And is he not would he not want to keep us from the word of God this year more than anything? So he 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 brings in doubt, he distorts, he distracts, he discourages. We don't want to spend a ton of time Jordan, but what how how does he create doubt in our minds? Yeah, think I think related to this. I think all these just fit in right just so perfectly with what we're trying to do. I mean, he creates doubt. Um you know, you don't really need to do this. You don't really need to make time for this. This is not that big of a deal. He gets you to doubt the power of God's word. And then you said distort. Distort is anytime he makes us estimate something wrongly. Yeah, or how, do, how would you explain? Truth. Yeah, just uh -huh. twist the reality of something. And so, 
you know, a question you're probably going to hear if you in, endeavor to do this is, you know, is this really going to make a difference in, in you? Is this really that important? Is it really going to help you? And so just Satan trying to like kind of twist maybe how we view this whole thing. And then distraction, that's, it. that's easy, right? I mean, we're so distracted with everything. And then just the, uh, the discouragement of falling behind. You miss a few days and you're like, oh, I got nothing to say to my group this week. Maybe I won't go or, yep. you know. So just not letting those, those Ds affect you. Yeah. You know, the, the distract, that's it, what Aaron was talking about that we all experience, right? Life gets so busy, we get distracted. He's going to want to do that to you. And that discourage, right? You'll miss a week and then you're like, see, I'm a loser. I knew it. And you want to set it aside. But that's why we put the weekly schedule in. Just, just jump back in. God is a God of grace. He's not up there condemning you. Don't, don't worry if you miss a day or two. Commit to being in the Word daily, but if you don't, um, don't worry about it. But definitely don't tell Garen, because you will be on a slide, and you will be on an illustration up here. <laughs> yeah. We're like, did you guys see Kylie only made it to March? Loser! So don't tell Garen, Kylie, if you fall behind. And for those of you who are like, Garen, you can't count because there's only four D words up there. The fifth one I thought was really powerful, and it's interesting because Brent came to me about a month ago and said this. And the fifth one is this, that he will divide a body. And so if he can't keep us from the word through doubting, distorting, distracting, or discouraging, if we do this this year, do you know what he's going to want to do? He's going to want to use this as a way of division. And you and I were talking like, how, can, like, how would that happen? What, what? Yeah. Well, I mean, Satan's a chess player, right? Like he sees moves ahead and he knows that if we're a body united on God's word he knows the effects that that has for God's kingdom and so he's going to do everything he can to stop it so not even just dividing your small triad or whatever but on his mind he's got bigger things he wants to divide 12th as a body and so any way he can do that in small ways and make it fracture into big ways he's gonna he's gonna try and do that so I guess we were talking about some of the ways that could happen um I mean anytime you're reading God's word there's gonna we we read God's word differently in small ways right so like Doctrinal differences, if I think it says one thing and you think it says another, not, not digging in our heels and like, well, we're going to have a 60-minute debate about who's right, uh -huh. you know, like that's not the point of it. Yep. Um, if you have really strong views about something, not, not bringing that to the group and not letting it be a time where like, well, I'm going to share my thoughts on this with these guys and they're going to see it my way and, and just realizing what the group's for and just like what it's not for. Yeah. And that's, that's what, Brent, that's what you shared is, is that it could get to where my doctrinal hobby horses, that I'm going to use this to start promoting my things on, on minor doctrinal issues. And let's just avoid that. Our group has been so good. It's because of these guys. But Gary, I don't know if you remember several weeks back, we were in First John. Somebody asked the question like about uh, eternal security, like can I lose my salvation or not? And they thought a verse supported one view. And... Just, and they said, I think you can lose your salvation, and here's why. And then they just asked, what about you guys? And I think two people were like, we think you can, and here's why. But two were like, we don't think you can. But what I loved about it is, is we spent about five minutes on it, and all we did is just shared a few things. But that wasn't the focus. The focus of this group is the community. It's Jesus. It's the Word of God. And we just let that thing slide. It was just almost an informational thing. So I really feel like, I know this is what Brent said, that the way that Satan can use this to divide, I think, is to get us on our doctrinal hobby horses and like view the spiritual gifts or the, our view of the Holy Spirit or our view of predestination, free will. Just, I don't, these are really big things, some of these things. But so don't let that be the focus of it. That's not the point. So um, let's not let him try to divide us through those things. Yeah. And it's interesting because the cure-all for this, is yeah, that where you want to go? go? To the next, I think we have one next slide. Oh. Or go back, sorry. We'll come there in a minute. Sorry, Charles. He's getting a lot of exercise. But what's the, what is the posture? Yeah. The yeah, I mean, it's not too often you say, well, this is kind of the one thing to solve it. But in this case, we, we, we thought that humility really was, Right. Like we talked about the fact that it's impossible to offend a humble person if you think about it. I think it's also impossible to fight with a humble person. Like if you come into your group and you're puffed up like my views, this is what's going to be, you could start a fight. But if anyone who has that humble posture, it's pretty hard to pick a, a meaningful fight with them in a big way, right? So just walking into your group with humility, first of all, submitting yourself under God's word and humility, like humility is just going to be the key to this whole thing really working well was kind of yeah. what we thought. And I mean, isn't it true, those of you who've walked with Jesus a long time, haven't you found, like, you'll have a doctrinal view of something, and then 
if humility, not just humility towards each other, like I'm not going to fight about my doctrinal beliefs, but also I think a humility that when I'm in the Word of God, I will allow Scripture to even come against my views, if that makes sense. Like if I read a verse that's a little different than how I, my theological framework, that I'm willing to be like, hmm, that's interesting and I'm taking that. Does that make sense? So if we have humility in all of this, humility towards the Word, that the Word shapes how I view, script, not Scripture, but how I view these different issues and humility and with each other, that it's not, we're not going to get into debates that that's not the point. Does that make sense? Um, let me show you something that I love about 12th, that I have uh, this, thing, this image in my mind or this language. So, Charles, I think we're ready. There's two kinds of ways of thinking. There's what's called bounded set thinking, and there's what's called centered set thinking. And some churches are bounded set, and a bounded set group is always focused on doctrine. And you've got to have the right doctrine, and they're testing everything by doctrine. And if you don't agree with them on all the doctrine, and they'll have a list of like 12 or 20 really important doctrines that you have to agree with them. What I've loved about 12th is we've not been a bounded set church, but a centered set church, which is we're all about Jesus and the kingdom of God. That's the, the main thing, right? We're a Baptist church, but I bet only 15% of us come from a Baptist background, because we major on orthodoxy and the major things. We believe the Bible is the Word of God, that God exists in a community of three, and the Trinity, that Jesus is the Creator. Salvation is only through His death and resurrection. He will come again. Okay, we agree on that, on orthodoxy. But we in here have different views on some other things, and that's okay, because we are centered set in our thinking that Jesus is the focal point. So as we approach Scripture, let's be centered set. Because if you do the next one, watch this circle. If, if you fo churches that focus on minor doctrinal issues, tend, they just get smaller and tighter. Do, do the next one. If I was controlling this, I could do this. But they tend to get more and more constrained in who can, who can be there, what's the right thing to believe. And we've never been that way here, and I don't want us to ever get that way. So I think that will help with humility. I've got, I think, a saying up here that's one of my favorites from the Moravians. Their motto was, in the essentials, unity. So in orthodoxy, yes, unity. But in the non-essentials, in those minor doctrinal issues, liberty. I give you the freedom, out of humility, the freedom to have your own belief based on the Word of God. And in all things, charity. We treat each other with love. So let's, uh, let's focus on being humble with each other um, as we approach this, because we don't want Satan to divide us through this. Does that make sense? Yep. So. Yeah, and, and we like all sorts of people at 12. Like, we even let Matt Brown in, for instance. Like, what other church... <laughs> would take this guy. I mean, really. But you're welcome here, buddy. You can... You're... <laughs> Is he smiling or yeah. crying? He's oh, wearing a mask. Yeah, uh, I can't only, tell. Only uh, oh, tears of joy? Always, yeah, fuming maybe, right? Fuming mad right now. Uh, yeah, he'll see you after oh, church. Oh, you want to pray after church together in the parking lot? <laughs> okay, I'll see you out there. <laughs> uh, all right, so... One other thing that I want to wrap up with about posture. So we want a posture of humility, but we also want a posture of submission to God and the Word of God. So if you would put up James 1, could you stand? I would like to read this as a body. Could we read this together? Because we not only want to have a posture of humility towards the Scripture and towards God and towards each other, we want a posture <coughs> of submission this year. So would you read with me? Do not merely listen to the Word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. And this is the word of the Lord. And keep standing, because we're going to pray in just a second. Um, we want to be not just humble as we approach the word, we want to be submissive to God and his word. And it's not just about knowledge and information. It's not just the head. We want him to speak to my heart, and I'm going to apply it with my hands. Does that make sense? So we want to be submissive to the word. So let us be people who obey the word. Um, we, a couple of illustrations, one that I was thinking of even today. Have you ever gone on vacation, you leave a note of things that people, whoever's taking care of your, your cat and your plants and your garden, all the stuff they're supposed to, you ever do that? I mean, we, we do that. My mother used to write very extensive notes. I kind of got that from her. 
Can you imagine if we went on vacation for two weeks, left a note with somebody, and we came back, and all our plants were dead, and our cat was laying in the living room dead, you know, a starvation, and we're like, what in the world did you do? And they're like, hey, we loved your instructions. In fact, my husband and I, we sat down every day, and we read your instructions. We memorized some of your instructions. We meditated on it, but we never, and you're like, but did you do it? Like, my cat's dead, and the plants are all dead, and my garden is shriveling up. Um, so it's that idea that, that we, don't just, we don't just hear it, but we apply it. You've got a good one from Francis Chan. Yeah, he just talks about the same thing with the football huddle, that if the coach called in a play and you huddled up and talked about it and then just never broke the huddle and ran the play and just kept taking, you know, delay of game penalties, oh, okay, well, what do we do next time? Well, let's talk about it. Oh, that sounds good, but never did it. I mean, what good is that? Same exact thing that yeah. it's got to be action, right? So let's be in the Word. And let's put it to action. So, all right, sermons this year are going to be following the reading. So next week, what I'm going to preach is going to come out of what you've read this week. And I want to tell you, we're not going to avoid tough text. I hate it when you read a commentary and you've got a question, and like they give a, one sentence to it, and you're like, that doesn't answer my question. So we're going to hit some tough text this year, at, at least Jordan, Jason, and Brent are. Um, <laughs> I've, I've, I've given them those weeks. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but, that, that's what we need. Yeah, yeah. but we are going to do that. Hey, if you, uh, for me, it's always helpful whenever I'm reading through a book of the Bible to understand what the author is about. On the back of the table on the way out, I've got an outline of Matthew, a chart of what Matthew's about. Basically, when you're reading Matthew, he wrote it to Jewish people to convince them that Jesus was the Savior, the Messiah, and he was not just the king of them, but he was the king of all nations. And so you can pick one of those up. It helps me to kind of know what I'm doing. So... All right, 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17 says that um, the, word, the, the Word of God is God-breathed and it's useful. It's useful for teaching, it's useful for rebuking, for correcting me, and for training me in righteousness so that I, the servant of God, can be fully equipped for every good work, right? Colossians 3, 16, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let it dwell in you richly. In John 8, 32, Jesus said, those who, who abide in my word are truly my followers. And those who abide in my word are truly my followers. And they will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So can we this year really dig in and commit to be a people of the word of God? Can we do that? All right, let me pray. Father, thank you for this body. Thank you for this for your word, thank you for the power of it, how it's so active in our lives and can transform us. Pray that you would come against Satan this year. He's going he's gonna to want to distort and distract and create doubt, and he's going to want to um, discourage us. Lord, help us to, to come against him, but protect us from the division that he will bring to our body as we do this and enter into it the way he's going to want to separate, that we will read and engage each other with humility and most of all, may we have a submissive attitude towards your word, Lord, of not just hearing it, not just it going to our head, but allowing it into our heart and that we put it to use in our hands and that we obey. And we're trusting that in a year we will become more and more like your son because of the power of the word in our lives. And so we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. If you're still needing a New Testament, come up and see me afterwards. And uh, just as Aaron is every day to the issue, we are sent to the places we are. Yes. Oh, yeah, Facebook group. Lisa, tell me, I, tell me more about the Facebook group. Okay. Okay, yeah, we are going to have a Facebook group, TABC Engage the Word, if you'll search that, and we're going to put stories and things to help encourage you as you do this. So, all right, thanks, Lisa. You are sent.